life is a casino. We don't sing, we just hit them off with c -Nos. And you can bet it all. I'm gonna be the last one standing tall. Joey Molino. What's up, Luigi? Life is a casino. We don't sing, we just hit them off with c -Nos. Tell us about And you can bet it all. I'm gonna be the last one standing tall. Joey Molino. With Joey Molino. This is Little Snuff from the Skinny Joey Merlino Podcast. We would like to thank you for watching. Head on over to Patreon for the full episode. Joe, it's time to take some time out to talk about our sponsor. Tell them about the Bluetooth Snuff, how, how easy it is to get and how it works. Absolutely. Guys, remember the days when you're always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get extra confidence in the bedroom. Listen up, bluechew.com. You can take them anytime, any day, at night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever the opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription in days. That sounds easy enough. Blue Chew wants to help you have a better sex life. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code SKINNY at checkout. I tried that. I, 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 didn't, I couldn't put my fucking thing in. Skinny. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get nothing. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, it do you, how does it work? It works great. Visit right. BlueChew.com. Promo code SKINNY. Receive your first month free. Welcome back to episode 29, The Skinny, with Joey Merlino and Little Snuff. We're back at the Podcast Junkie Studio in Boca Raton, Florida, and it's good to be in What's the up, Sunshine Cousine? State. What's up, Joe? None. Nice weather you caught. Always. Thank God. It's been it's been better for me. Uh, it's about time. Yeah. I got a nice little tan going Every on. Every time I go to Philly, it fucking rains or snows. That's the truth. And when I was coming here for a while, it was always raining. Yeah, it was a bad winter. But before we get into the episode... I got you black with the suntan lotion. Yes, you did. We're That's what I out, wanted to say. We're coming out with Skinny Joey's Jailhouse Suntan Lotion. You'll be Pittsburgh medium. That's right. You put this on. It's all natural. I'm telling you, I made the concoction in jail. I used to lay in the yard. I get black. And it's all natural. All natural. Look at snuff. Yeah. It one just, day I had one it day. On. One day. I'm burnt to a crisp. I love it. It'll be out soon. Just in time for the summer. Yes. You'll be. You won't look like Snooky. You won't <laughs> no, be orange. No, you won't be orange no, for sure. Get your, get your fucking dark. The only orange and we like is the skin. Flyers orange that you're wearing. I got the Flyers shirt on. The orange yeah. representing the Flyers. And I got the State of Mind hat. Good friend of ours, Louis D'Angelo and Anthony D'Angelo. This is their brand. We're going to have the link in the bio for them also. Right, so good. I got the hat on today. But we wanted to get into the episode <sighs> before we get into the rat of the month. What we want to talk about first is a couple of stories that everybody likes to hear is Joey growing up and things like that. I had a question for you. Growing up, what kind of shows did you like going to and, you know, who did you like going to see? Well, we used to go to the movies and shit when we were kids, you know. Yeah. But my father used to take us to the, there was no casinos then, the Latin Casino, it was called, but it wasn't Latin Casino. Latin Casino, where was that located? Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill, New Jersey, okay. Every, I seen everybody there. Really? The best fucking place ever. Who was some of the people that you seen that you really loved? <laughs> Diana Ross, Lou Rawls, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, Teddy Pendergrass, Tom wow. Jones, but Sinatra used to go a lot. Oh, Frank was there. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. So I know who the fuck wanted to see Sinatra. I was twelve. Yeah. I had to wear a suit. I had a blue velvet suit on. So we had a table. We went one night. It was me, me, my mother, my father, my sister, Salvi, his mother, Phil Testa, Al, uh, Salvi's mother. We had the table dead front, in the center. So I'm fucking. They had like a comedian open up, whatever. Now he's coming on singing, you know, just slow. Yeah. So I'm fucking, I fall asleep. Immediately, fucking, out like a light. I'm, my arm's on the fucking stage, I guess. I'm fucking out cold. He yeah. wakes me up. He said, what am I boring you? Who, Sinatra? Yeah. He said, wow. <laughs> yeah, he said, what am I boring you? I said, no, nah, no. Nah. Then another time I was eating a shrimp cocktail there and the fucking lemon. I went, I got the lemon flew on the fucking stage. <laughs> yeah. We're right on the fucking stage. I'm talking yeah, about Yeah, I mean, you're stage. right there, front, yeah. front and center. But that was the best place. They had Chinese, everybody was dressed up, suit, tie. So back then you had to wear a suit and tie? Yeah. I didn't want to wear one. This fucking twelve year old yeah. kid wants to wear a suit. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, everybody, my, they always got dressed. Everybody says yeah. you had to wear like at least a Lisa sports jacket. No, back everybody then. was dressed. Yeah, not, not today. Like, Everybody's not like in today. t-shirts. Yeah, but yeah. no, it was that was the best place. You name it, we sold them. They all came here. There was no casinos. Yeah. It was, a, and they had the best Chinese food and regular food. It was always good to land because uh, what best. year did they close though? Like, how did they get rid of that? Was uh, that before uh, Atlantic City? Way before Atlantic. Oh, okay, City. so and that's when Atlantic it was. City closed. It probably buried them. Yeah. But we used to go, me, Philip Narducci, we used to go see every show. Yeah. It was the best. We had that's, the, that's great. As a young a table, kid. Like in, we had dead center front row. Now, back then, did you know Sinatra was that big, or you didn't care you were a young yeah, kid? No, yeah, and then, and it was funny, me and Philip, 
uh, Phil had Bank Street 5, and Sinatra came here one night to eat. So we came over there, and he was in there with his wife, I think Jilly, because he just performed it at the Latin. Okay. And was, we were in there, fucking one in the morning. He was fucking bombed. Yeah. And he's walking out, he looked at his watch, and he pinched my cheek. He's like, what the fuck are you doing up this late? It was like 1.30 <laughs> yeah, in the morning. Yeah. I was just fucking big. But That's was great. Good. Yeah, he was good, Sinatra. That's he was it. the best. Yeah. I mean, he was a legend. legend. Best, but that know. was the best place to see a show. They had every... We've seen everybody there. Whoever was... Like the casinos got yeah. now, they had. How was they gambling back then? I mean, I know you couldn't gamble at 12 years old, but... No, there how, was no fucking casinos. There was nothing. No. The sort of Latin casino, you couldn't even go in no, there? No, it was no casino. That's the, oh, that's the that's name the of it. Oh, that's the name of it. Yeah, it was yeah, a Latin see, casino, I don't know that. but it was it was no fucking casino. Wow. Then that's Atlantic crazy. Atlantic City, it was in Cherry Hill. There's no yeah. casinos in Cherry Hill. Then Atlantic City got the gamble. This is in the 70s, 75. There so, was the racetrack was in Cherry yeah, Hill, yeah, yeah, the racetrack. We've seen Frankie Valley there a million times. Uh, you name it, we've seen him there. That's amazing. They were, and we had the best seats. That, that, no, it was good. That, that's good, good times. But So Sinatra pinched, pinched your yeah. cheeks and yeah. my boring you. You can't make that up. Yeah. I was fucking sleeping on the stage, like passing out. That's amazing. But it was good times. At, that's good times back then. Unfortunately, I didn't get to say I'm only 32 years old, but yeah. my father, my mother, yeah, I'm father, sure. Yeah, my father were there. They, they enjoyed that. Grandfather. They were the, it was the good days. They were the good times. Now everything's different. Everything changed. But what we're going to do now is, like we said, this is one of our biggest episodes that we're going to do. This is the second time we're doing this. We're going to talk about Rat of the Month this month. Well, we got two of them. We got two of them. We got the Andy Persiani from wherever the fuck he's from, Philly, Jersey. Nobody knows where he's from. Yeah, who the fuck knows? And uh, Frank, Frank Pasquale. The third. The third. Well, yeah. yeah. The third. The whole so, family's probably rats. The first and the second. So who <laughs> yeah, fuck knows? Who knows? And we have our good friend coming on the show from We Push Back, Dominic. He, he, the he's best. coming on. One of the best guys. He helps us out with anything we need. And we just want to talk about that also. Everything that Joey talks about, Dominic talks about, they have the proof to back it up. It's you can right go here. on WePushBack.com. It's right here. All the documents are right there. there. I, got, I got everything. So you're uh, going, I'm going to try to show some on the screen. It's hard. Yeah, we have a lot to do but whatever, today. Whatever you want to read, Dominic's got it on on his website. Yeah, just everything. go to We Push Back. You can read everything. Everything you want he has on there about not just this that we're going to talk about, but even when we did the Rat of Month on JR, everything's up there. But this is our second time doing the Rat of Month. We're going to start with two guys. We got all the information. We're going to bring Dominic on now. And for you to get this full episode, you have to go over to Patreon. You have to subscribe. The link's in the bios. We told you how to do it. Get on there for the full episode. It's something you're not going to want to miss. So let's bring Dominic on. Yeah, this guy's a beauty, Pasquale. Yeah, we got to put the headsets on. Oh, hey, gentlemen. What's up, Dom? How you doing? Doing all right. How about yourself? Good. Thanks Hi, for Dom. coming on again. Thanks. How are you, Pop? Good, my buddy. You look great. Yeah, Holy. so do you guys. Glad to be back on. <laughs> Absolutely. Dom, just introduce yourself for our new followers that don't know exactly who you are. Introduce your website. Tell them where they can find you at. So if you want to go through that. Okay, sounds good. Uh, my name is Dominic Crea. I own Justice Technology Professionals. It's a litigation support firm. What we do is we help uh, defense teams prepare for trial. In addition, I own, uh, host a podcast, Justice Tech Pros, which kind of coincides with what my uh, company does. And also we have uh, WePushBack.com, which I started to bring attention to these lying informants and really educate the public and future jurors on the perils of them impacting the justice system. Yes. No, he does a great job. Yeah, you do a great job, Don. And everybody Thanks. loves your page, and they love exactly what you're doing. Not I, everybody, my friend. No, not everybody. <laughs> well, yeah. We do, so, yeah. you know, That's Joey. That's all that matters. They're yeah. good people. They're good team. people. Joey's got all the paperwork over there. But first, we want to start out with, for people who don't know, i seen this guy on Instagram, on TikTok before. Now he's recently back in jail bullshitting and telling stories about crazy stuff. But who are we going to talk about first, if you want to go through that? Yeah, um, what's what's interesting about this uh, degenerate is uh, this is Frank Pesqua III. Okay. He, he was basically the catalyst of the indictment that impacted my father and uh, three other defendants, uh, Matthew Madonna, Christopher Londonio, and uh, Terrence Caldwell. He was the um, main person they used at the grand jury. And what's interesting, what we're going to see now is this is kind of what set it all off. He was selling drugs, doing all degenerate things out in Mississippi. Okay. He gets pulled over, as you're going to see. And then uh, to get out of it, within, I think it's like 10 minutes, he says, I can help you guys. I could give you information. They bring him back to the station. Whose name does he drop? He starts dropping my father's name. Wow. Now, it's interesting. He don't know my father from Adam. And this is just to show how it works and how the grand jury really doesn't uh, you know, you don't, they say what? You can indict a ham sandwich? A ham sandwich. Very accurate. Yeah. Very accurate. Yeah, well, that's, it's a one-sided thing, the grand jury. You yeah. Got, you got no defense lawyer. 
You got no. No, it's just a one sided thing. Yeah, it's, it's just it's the, the prosecution yeah, basically wild. saying we have this, this, and that, and that's it. You know. Well, let's play the first tape. And just for people like myself who don't know about any of this stuff, and I hear it from Joey and I heard it from you, and I'm learning about it. It's crazy that these guys just get a j- get out of jail free card. Look, he gets he, pulled over. He don't even know his father. He's in fucking where the fuck's he at? Mississippi. Yeah, he's in Mississippi, and even the cops had no idea who the hell he was talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. Until he mentions the name, and then they say, I guess, contact the FBI. Well, they probably called the yes. FBI. Yeah, what happens is, uh, you won't see it all today, because it's like a th- four-hour tape. We're just showing segments. But what happens is he brings up the name, then they call in somebody from Washington, and then they move him up to, uh, I forgot, they send him to Putnam County Jail, and that's when the whole thing started. This was back in 2015. That's oh. where JR was, Putnam County. Really? Yeah, yeah, I they think must they put the all the rats there. Yeah, yeah that's where he was, them. Putnam County. That's crazy. You want to play that first tape for us? He's going to put it on right now. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. You know, so if you're yeah. telling me you got a little issue, that's fine. I, I, all right? have, uh, I tell you what, I have a little issue. Yeah. You do? Yeah, but there's no, I'm, there are no narcotics here. I literally got off a plane. And... Is that it? Yeah, he's yeah, saying, he's talking one. about it. There's no narcotics here. He said he literally got off a plane. Wow. Yeah, and, and he says I got an issue. About, yeah, five minutes later, they find the heroin exactly like uh, Joe said. They, he says, I have an issue. And it goes to show, you know, he's just basically a junkie. He got caught yeah. with a spoon. And he got caught with a spoon and a bunch of stuff. And they'll find heroin on him later, which we're going to see. Yeah, play the yeah, second play one the for us. One. Were these videos allowed in court? No, we got these under the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, we got these during the thing, and it's not that they weren't allowed. What happened was the, they never uh, used him, right? They never used him. They used him to get the indictment, right, and then the government didn't call him because wow. during our pretrial proceedings, we proved countless times how many times this guy lied. All right, run that through. You can have something show up in your pocket and survive. A cop gets stuck on me. But, you know, if you got... I found the needles and then I found a spoon. I mean, yeah, no, you, you, you know the system. You know, you know how it is. You know, I had to try to throw something by you. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. You know what I mean? You look like yeah. a train, so I figured you'd lose those things. It's not the oil base. So they found needles and a spoon. Needles and a spoon. Yeah, and he was saying I, he tried to slip it by them. Um, and, and I think it's it's just a good example that we show this because you have to realize this is the same guy now who went in front of a grand jury swore on a Bible and said all these lies about people. And, and this is whose word the government believes without any kind of fact-checking or cross-reference or anything like that. Well, without him, they couldn't get the indictment. Correct. There would be no indictment. And then they didn't, you know why they didn't call him as a witness? Because they charged Dominic's father and two other guys with a murder. Meanwhile, he admitted him and his father did it, the murder. Yeah. That's, that's what that's he said. His father's fucking charged with it. This yeah. guy said he did it. Yeah, in his 302s, he said him and his dad did it. Yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. That's fucking unbelievable. Now, and then this is the best part. When they, when they, I guess the government got nervous, he was saying that. They go, oh, he misunderstood. How do you misunderstand if you did something like that? Talking about a fucking murder. You ain't talking <laughs> yeah. about fucking buying chewing nope. gum. He misunderstood. Yep. He misunderstood. Now, when he moved out there, he was already an informant and he got pulled over? No, uh, mm-hmm. this is back in 2015. Okay. We, honestly, I knew nothing about this guy. It seems like he was just like a lower level degenerate. Gotcha. And, uh, he was just down in Mississippi from what I was hearing. And when we did the background, he was involved with like the strippers and drug dealing and all that. Right. So yeah. I guess when he got arrested, you know, he used his get out of jail free card yeah. and told him whatever his he His father don't even know him. That's crazy. It's fucking and, sick. And he gets pulled over by regular cops. So how did, and then what do they do? He says your father's name and they get the FBI Well, they called the FBI probably. As soon as they yeah, heard his father's name. Yeah, not at that level. Not at that level, Snuff. What happened was he's trying to actually cooperate with them, which you're going to see okay. with other drug dealers in Mississippi. He's trying to cooperate. Then when they bring him back to the office, that's when he starts dropping names. Let's play this. Let's play another one. It's the third clip. He's an ugly motherfucker, too. I mean, I try to be as stand-up as possible, but I can mm-hmm. tell I'm not dealing with stand-up, you know, crowd down here. I, I can find help people, and then those pins get help. You know? Right. Like that, I can definitely help people. We'll talk, for sure. He said he's stand up. Yeah, he's going to try and be as most stand up as possible. And that's where he said also, if you heard it, he goes, I'll help you. Help you. You know, I can offer help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he stood up like a wet napkin. Fast. He the got pulled over in five minutes. He's already 
Yeah, already he's already trying to help them out to get out of it, to make excuses. It's amazing. It's absolutely Fucking crazy. Amazing. It's really nuts. But nice what's one. really amazing is think about it, Joe. They took a guy who gets pulled over with heroin in Mississippi, and the government just because he dropped the name took that guy serious and flew him to New York. Yeah. Imagine yeah. that. No, it's fucking nuts. Yeah, that's that's pretty wild. I mean, yeah. you could just do, like you could just say anybody's name. A yeah. guy exactly. gets pulled over outside. Well, I don't right even now. know him. Yeah, that's that's fucking sickening. That really yeah. is. Your whole life's at risk, no matter at, at, every day, every day. This is where they're saying the, the guy asked him, You're gonna help us, Frank. yeah. No. And he goes, Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna help you. That's what I'm doing here, yeah. you know. Yeah, I so didn't go this kinda, far for nothing, he said. Right. That's kind of the beginning of it where right. they started putting it together and then they take him in the back room and then the higher ups came in from uh, the, uh DC and all that. All just from getting pulled over. Suck. For him being a fucking chunky. Yep. It's, it's, it's wild. Now, and then when they, did they use this guy on the stand no. at all versus your father? No, no, they didn't even call him. That's what's so amazing. They used this guy to get the indictment. Okay. Never used him. Then we prove he lied you know, because we showed all the consistencies where he said he killed the victim. Yeah. Then they don't even call him. They don't even call the guy. I blame the lawyers though. I would have called him as a defense. I would have called him. Yeah. Well, there was a little bit of a, a strategy issue, yeah. but. Yeah, I would have I I called that motherfucker. I know we understand. talked about this before, but didn't he say that he would see your father in this place that nobody else could go to? No, that was... No, not him. Uh, no, that was, was somebody else? Yeah, that was JR. Yeah, it could be somebody else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was JR. He said, he, when you had the video, right. with, with your father, remember? He said, oh, yes. I he said he knew his father great. With, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. I'm he, sorry. Your father was in Rigoletto's. He had the, the camera on the glasses. He right. asked the guy, buddy, he said, who's that guy there? He said, Stevie. Yeah. He didn't even know him. He didn't <laughs> even know crazy. him. That's crazy. That's who it was. was. I'm yeah. sorry. I misspoke on yeah. that one. But yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. that when we yeah. talked about that. Yep. That's crazy. It's unbelievable. Want to play the next one for us? Thank you. This one's funny. <laughs> <laughs> who the hell is that guy? He's the cop. The sheriff. When he reached up, when the ladder reached up in there, and he goes, whoa, hey, man, really? <laughs> They're laughing that they found the heroin. Yeah, the cops were yeah. See, what happened was they brought him in the back room, and one of the cops, you know, went up his rear end, and, and the guy, Pasquale, was like, oh, what are you doing? So now they're laughing at that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's where he was hiding it at. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Old... And this is an example, though. Just look at the type of people. And now this guy goes on to become an informant. Then what does he do while he's on witness protection? He beats his wife, beats his kid, and now he's back in jail for five years because yeah. of it. Beat his wife up bad. Yep. And his son. Did he get thrown out of the program, or they still yeah. got him in the program? No, no, I'm sure him. he did. I mean, I'm yeah, sure they probably he threw him out. They, yeah, yeah put, it's mild. He'll come out, set somebody else up. Let me ask you a question, Joe. How many chances do people in the program get? As many as they, I don't know. Fuck Is there a not. rule? I know. They all say the same thing. If they break their plea agreement, they rip it up and they got to go to jail. Jr. broke it nine times and never went to jail. Oh, they all break it. Every yeah. one of them break it. They all break it. Wait, these shit is Persiani. That's crazy. Play play the next one for us. I think there's a... That's it? Okay, so that, that was it on them tapes, Dom. Okay, yeah. We only brought segments because, like I yeah. said, the entire thing's like four hours yeah. long. Yeah. So I figured it, it was good just yeah. to highlight the character of these individuals. The heroin should have broke when it was up his ass. Yeah. The bag. And what's funny, uh, Snuff, did you see him on the A-Light and Barella podcast? Yes, I did. Talking like a tough guy, how yeah. crazy he was. He has all these bodies under his belt. And it's he was really burying crazy. his father, too, when I seen it. Yeah. He was talking about his, his dad. Yeah, yeah and I didn't know who father. he was until, you know, until last week when I started looking at it. But he's right. another guy that these informants, they go on the podcast and they talk about it. Now it's for the kids. We, you know, we, you could say whatever, they could say yeah. whatever they want. But now we expose them. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. And they all say that they did everything. Everything. No matter what the they say, it's is, crazy. What's amazing is they've been on here for years and years doing this. Now we come into the picture and we're starting to do things and look at the chaos it's causing. Yeah. They don't like they don't like a little of their own medicine. No, no they, they don't, don't like, like it. it. They don't like they fucking hate us. Yep. It, it, it's all they do is talk about us. Every mm -hmm. fucking show they talk everything. about me. Every, well, that's exactly us. where I need to be. I want to be yeah. hated by them me and too. anybody who supports yeah. them. Yeah, that's yeah. I need to fuck be. it. Listen, we got yep. people come up to us every single day. Yeah. Every single day. We love that you're a voice for the good guys. Listen, we we're, love telling, it. we're telling the truth. Yeah. We got the paperwork. Right. Everything we got yeah. is from the government. It's not from me. 
No, listen, nobody's here trying to say who's an angel, who's is it. It has nothing to do with that. We're just showing the type of caliber of these individuals and how the government lets them go on the Internet attacking families, telling lies, telling stories. It's unacceptable. Listen, they they threaten people on the Internet. Yeah, they do. I mean, I get threatened every day. We we get get locked up. I would get locked up in two minutes. I had that Jimmy Calandra, Joe, tell me to meet him in a garage so he could stab me or do whatever. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine I said that. Yeah, for, yeah you'd, you'd, be, locked, you'd be locked up. Be, be yeah. locked up in two we seconds. Get, we get threatened every week. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If Joey said one thing that these people say, it's a, it's the, a, everything's yeah. done. They, they let them do what they want to do. Yeah, no, it's really they crazy. Beat, listen, every one of them, though, all love to beat woman up. Well, we got that article. They yeah. all beat woman up. JR, Panisi, yep. Pasquale. They all have an obsession with they women. They love to beat women. girls up. Because it makes what, them feel like I don't know what they're the a man, I guess, because they know they're really not a man. That fucking other motherfucker, Panisi... I got I got the thing. I got. Uh, I don't have it with me. He was in a million jails. He was in protective custody every jail he went to. He was a fucking rat from back then. From back then. He went to fifty jails, protective custody. They probably got hip to him. He probably, and then they would ship him to another jail. Wow. Yep, always in PC on all his records. All his record, protective custody. Protective custody. The whole time he was in jail. Dom, now just not of the guys we're talking about today. Tell everybody that you also have on your website. Every court case that they want to see or anybody that they want to know about, you do all for that also on your site, right? Yeah, what happens is the site is kind of organic and ever populating. I try to get people involved who are impacted. So if they introduce me to a new informant who lied on them or impacted their family, I get the information and I populate the site. Right now we have 16 up there and it's just growing. And what I try to put on there is like the 302s. Five right. kick on, and I try to really show their behavior after they testify. Yeah, because right. what happens is, you know, the prosecutor, the judge, they paint these guys as angels and how they turn the new leaf. So it's very important for the public to see. Well, that's not the case. Look how they're behaving. Look how they're tormented families. Look how they're still lying. Yeah. So yeah, the, the website will continue to populate, and continue to add. <laughs> yeah, look at everything. that motherfucker, Sammy the bully. Where's a shirt? Something 19, 19 people he killed. Yeah. He's proud of it. Proud of it. Yeah. And yeah, a yeah. fucking killed an innocent kid. It's crazy. Bragg. 16, 15, yeah, he's bragging. He got a shirt, selling shirts. Well, killed. I know people sell baseball bats. Yeah, yeah. they sell bats that they, they sell. You know, fuck you know, out of That's just totally bizarre to me. But, me. You, you know, Dom, you got a lot of supporters. We have a lot of supporters. And I think that everybody really appreciates the podcast, yeah. well, especially when we do it together, because they're getting information and they're seeing the other side of things. Because for Absolutely. such a long time on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube, there was only that's one side. It's a one-sided side. story. That's it. It's like Absolutely. a grand jury. Yeah. Same as a grand jury. It's a one-sided story. Yeah. What do they call it? Kangaroo court? Look, like, no, like they crazy. said, they get indicted ham sandwich. It's one-sided. Yeah. So we're and, and it's just, it's ridiculous in the sense that you get people where all they're doing is absorbing absorbing the information from these informants. And right. for all the years, there was nothing to counteract that. That's yeah. why what we're doing is so important. Yeah. Absolutely. And Dominic's got the, the transcript of uh, Pasquale uh, beat the wife up and the, and the, and the son, if you, yeah. want to, if you want to read it. Yeah, it's if you on, want to read it's that. It's on the website. So we'll have that And also, just too. to interject on, on that note, Joe, I also do what's called a courts and session series where right. people could just play it and they hear the transcript being read. I actually oh, really? Hire that's yeah, better. I hire I hire voice actors and they read the transcripts. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, that's you. awesome. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's good yeah, for people can... people who that are love crime and they really want to hear it. We push back. Yeah, that's good for you. You don't know how to read. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's see how much of a good job you're going to do now. I can't see that fucking yeah. good. So now we're going to get on to the second rat who we're going to do. But first, we had a giveaway for your birthday, and we just want to say Stephen. Nunez won the giveaway. He won an autographed picture by you, 8x10, and he also won a t-shirt. And he's a big supporter of our podcast yeah, and especially Dominic's podcast. Yeah, yeah, he's Nunez good. is great. Yeah, yes. he's a good man. Great, great guy. Man. So he won our giveaway. It was our first giveaway we did for Joey's birthday. Shout out to him. Always supporting us. We would like to thank you for watching. Head on over to Patreon for the full episode. Life is a casino. We don't sing. Hit him off with c and you can bet it all. I'm going to be the last one standing tall, Joey Molino. What's up, Luigi? Life is a casino. We don't sing. We just hit him off with c and you can bet it all. I'm going to be the last one standing tall, Joey Molino. Skinny with Joey Molino. This is Little Snuff from the Skinny Joey Molino Podcast. We would like to thank you for watching. Head on over to Patreon for the full episode.